follow us on facebook and instagram and do subscribe our youtube and telegram channels now let's start our discussion welcome to english lecture notes today we came up with the summary of the play harvest written by manjula padmanabhan Manjula Padmanabhan is an award-winning Indian playwright, journalist, comic strip artist, and children's book author. Harvest is a futuristic play by Manjula Padmanabhan about organ selling in India. Harvest won the 1997 Onassis Prize as the best new international play. Harvest is a futuristic play by Manjula Padmanabhan. The play takes place in a future Bombay in 2010. The financial crisis and computerization at the global level have turned the unskilled employees jobless. Om Prakash, a jobless Indian, agrees to sell unspecified organs through interplanter services to a rich person for a small fortune. This play deals with the first and third world countries. In India, there are more developed places than others. People still suffering and finding a way to support their families with food and shelter, they will do almost anything to make a living. Om Prakash, a jobless Indian, agrees to sell unspecified organs through interplanter services to a rich person for a small fortune. He was a clerk and nobody needs clerks anymore. That's why he lost his job. We see the character Om signing up as an organ donor, Dini, who is an American woman simply because there is no more jobs in India. Dini pays him to lead and live a healthy life, so when it is time for doing an organ, there is no difficulty or problem in doing so. So we can begin with the story as the play opens with the description of city traffic and hustle bustle where ma sits on the bed listening carefully as she leans against the wall Jaya stands by the window looking out for Om Then ma looks at Jaya asking her to come for a moment and help her understand what others are saying outside Jaya dismisses it Ma and Jaya argues in this case and Ma gets irritated with Jaya's statement about minding her own business. Ma exclaims saying that Jaya by addressing as if she is the royalty of the house, pointing out her worrisome face because Om will not get the job while she looks out from the window. Ma taunts Jaya as Jaya does not hope about Om's getting a job and Ma taunts her again that she should be a dutiful wife hoping the best for her husband at home. Jaya sees Om coming back from the window. Jaya observes Om coming back to the house and Ma still commenting sarcastically, "Jaya and Ma are you with each other as Ma seems to dislike her and always find guilt and wrong about Jaya, stating that Jaya might have grown up in a jungle and compares to other neighbors with 10 people and 20 people living in harmony." Jaya dismisses her and watches out for Om as she opens the door and welcomes her husband Om. Ma exclaims that Jaya is running out to her husband as some idiot schoolgirl but Ma remains smart thinking she even sees what's going inside Jaya's head and she is not a fool Om walks in with a bulky parcel and Ma exclaims my son and welcomes him home Ma starts the discussion of of the job and Jaya stands at the center with uncertainty Ma is concerned and states that it is the loss for them for not hiring Om for a work and wonders how are they going to manage everything jaya questions om regarding the situation of the job 
and Om said that he got a job by placing the parcel he bought in. Ma is astonished and unbelievable and Om said again that, I got the job and Ma is happy and congratulated him. Om says that, it was easy in the end, and Ma orders Jaya to bring him some milk and ask him to come to his mother for hug. Om tells Ma that, he was inside a building with a big machine, iron bars and they wait like goats at the slaughterhouse and around 6,000 men were waiting in the hot sun. There were guards everywhere, in grey uniforms and tells that, these guards will be coming at any moment to their house. Jaya, Om, and Ma discusses, about the arrival of the guards and Om tells them that, they are here to inspect the building and set up something in the house. Jaya tells Ma to keep quiet and both Ma and Jaya continuously argues again, and Om tells Ma to behave and stay silently. Ma is concerned asks Om, if there's something wrong he has done, and asks him what is there to hide about. Om only says that, these guards need to check everything, and set up the arrangements are perfect. Om has no knowledge about the duration of the work, and the money he will get from the job. Om describes to Jaya and Ma, about the building that it is endless, and many were standing line, not only on one floor but above floor as well and said, being a cage shaped like a tunnel. They gave them the parcel or package, and not to open them for they will come at their home, for the final instructions. Ma and Jaya become suspicious of the work, and Om has no answer, but tells them that the guards gave them the pamphlet, to read that said that they were selected and they were told them, to obey their instructions and would be monitored, on their lives. In order to be employed, Om and his family has to follow, their instructions. When Jaya asks Om how can they afford it, a child bursts in their door which was left unbolted exclaiming, Auntie, regarding the arrival of the police or the guards, that Om talked about. The guard one arrives to the door, for the approval stating that this is interplanter service and, whether the house is the residence of Om Prakash. Jaya answers it is yes and the guard one asks, if he is addressing Om Prakash. The guard two and guard three enters while they talk and the other two guards, brought an installation set up. The guard three sets up the installation, while the guard two installs device onto the window frame. Ma is confused and asks, who are they and the guard one tells Om that, they are ready to start. The guard one congratulated Om and welcomes him, for the program and gives him the starter kit and operator, where instructions are given. Meanwhile the guard three has two cartons, set up and goes to the kitchen and starts dumping necessary items from the kitchen, Jaya becomes furious at guard 3, for touching the things from the house and Om hears Jaya's loud voice, but the guard 1 asks that, the contact module will be found in the starter kit, but Om is distracted and the guard 1 keeps on talking, saying that it will be activated in 2 hours. Jaya struggles with guard 3, who keeps dumping all items into the cartoon boxes, and she complains calling him a monster, beast or a machine and tells him to stop it. The guard 3 continues his work, and cleans and swabs the entire area and puts a new cooking device and bottles, full of multicolored pellets. The guard 1 tells Om that, the first contact will exchange personal information, including physical data for matching. When the guard 1 inquire Om, about queries but Om hesitates and is unable to ask, further queries. The guard 1 tells that, they will not be responsible for anything, but of the maintenance and warns that, the interplanter services will give them the fuel for them, to consume for their domestic units and they are warned to share or sell the fuel to outside. Also, the electrical appliances will be given to them, for the domestic units and other installation of contact module, for operation and additional loads caused by sharing, selling or loaned will not be entertained. The guard one starts the inquiry and Jaya interrupts, regarding her stove which is broken, by the guard three. The guard one insists to ask the query from Ma and Om tells the query, that her mother name is Indumati Prakash. Ma remains silent, regarding the query and Om insists his mother, but she stays silent. The guard one moves to another member Jaya, for she knew that it was her turn and she slams the door and moves forward. Jaya tells her full name and the guard one asks, what is her relationship with the donor? Donor is Om. Jaya states that she is Om's sister and Ma is shocked to hear it. Jaya even lies about the next query to guard one, 
that her husband is at work and made jeeting Kumara simply G2 is her husband. Ma is infuriated and shocked. The guard one tells them that the missing member especially G2 should contact them before 20 hours for the completion of query or they will lose the advantage of interplanter services. The other guards discussed the installation process and everything has been checked and done. The guard two steps next to the contact module and points at a remote and a large screen appears. The guard one reports that the installation is done and the sanitization of the place is also done. The guards decides for departure. The guard one tells Om Prakash to sign that he appreciates the installation process and they departs with greetings. Ma is sad and questions Om's job regarding Jaya who has now become Om's sister due to the kind of job. Ma constantly argues about Jaya's statement and Om states that nothing has changed and those are just words on the document. Jaya mocks and calls Om a brother and asks how to even cook food since they have taken everything from the kitchen and Om tells them that everything is there in the package regarding the food and other stuffs. Second scene opens with Ma and Om in the same room and eating the food from their newly installed colored pellets. Jaya is sitting and leaning her head next to the bed. The package is open and devices and other stuffs can be seen. Ma questions Om about the job and Ma is still confused about the type of job. Ma asks that Om only has to sit all day and stay healthy and he will get money for it, which makes her confused. Jaya is bitter about it and demands Om to tell her the truth. Ma tells Jaya to not talk to her husband in loud voice. Jaya and Om argues and Jaya tells that everyone knows about it when grey guards comes to their house and knows what part of a person's body has been given away. Ma is scared and demands to know what parts of whom and confused. Jaya keeps subtly tells Ma about the organ cell but Ma sarcastically tells her that she has gone crazy. Om is unable to tell Ma but tells her that he is working for a foreigner and the money comes from abroad. Ma wonders if Om has to go abroad or the entire people has to go abroad but Om denies and Jaya sarcastically tells that it is not the whole people but parts of it meaning organs of the body which will be consumed by the first world country. Ma is confused again with Jaya's statement and Om argues with Jaya as he doesn't want her to bring up what he has done and not let Ma the entire truth. Jaya is disheartened by the fact that she has to call Om his brother and that she has become his sister. Om insists that he will become rich and insists that it is better for her to be called as a sister rather than living in the small room being poor. Ma furiously asks Om regarding the foreigner and how Om even knows her implying the foreigner could be a girl. Om said that they never met before and he probably a boy is probably sick and Ma demands answer from him but Om insists that she will never understand. Jaya then tells the truth that Om has sold his rights to his bodily organs including his skin, eyes and arms and cries in pain about how Om's bodily pieces will be snatched away, piece by piece and questions Om on how she would be able to endure such pain of losing him and becoming a widow. Ma is astonished and they are you about this. Jaya is vocal stating that they do not grow on trees or in the bushes implying that they are also a human being and should spare their lives. After the argument was a long silence and all of a sudden, the contact module with the large screen comes to life with the face of white lady. She is Guinea and says hello to them. Guinea and Om has a conversation and Guinea is glad that she could have a conversation with Om and how grateful she is. Ma is unable to understand Guinea as she speaks fast. However, Guinea is happy as she is finally able to find hope to save her and honest Om for it. In the conversation, when Guinea asks about Ma, Om gladly says that she is his mother, but Jaya tells her that she is his wife contradicting to what the guard one has taken noted in the form before. Guinea becomes suspicious about Om as he is supposed to be unmarried and Jaya should be his sister, but Om clarifies that he is unmarried and Jaya is his sister. Guinea tells them that they need to trust each other and Om keeps saying that he is telling the truth when it is clearly a lie. Jaya is rude during the conversation and Guinea tells Jaya that she cannot talk to two people at a time and switches to Om. 
Meanwhile, Ma finds it difficulty with having a conversation with Gini, as Ma is technically illiterate. During the conversation, Ma finds Gini attractive and calls her an angel and Ma all of a sudden, wanted to go to toilet, but Gini insists her to wait for a while, but Ma says that she does not need permission from anyone, to go to toilet and walks away. Gini finds out that, there are no toilets in their house and Gini freaks out, when Om tells him that, there are 40 families who share one toilet, calling it unsanitary and disgusting. Gini talks about, installing a new toilet in their house and Jaya interrupts the conversation, if she is planning to install a toilet in this room. Jaya says that, they cannot as there is no space, but Gini insists that they have to find space for toilet and wonders that, they would have been dead by plague years ago. Gini made Jaya upset with the question regarding the bath, as she is unable to answer and Gini wants to know if she takes bath, at least once a day. Having been unable to answer, Jaya gets upset and Gini tries to compensate, by promising her to send whatever she desires and that, she will send a chocolate to her. Gini tells Om that, she is departing and the toilet will arrive at his home, in an hour. Om is surprised that, she is a woman and Jaya thinks that, she is young and healthy and does not look sick. Jaya and Om have a conversation, while having a sarcastic comments on, how Jaya could talk rubbish, when Jaya accused Gini on praying over young men, but Jaya is vocal and calls Om his sister and Om apologizes as well as Jaya to Om. It is a moonlight and city skyline as the backdrop. A sense of shadowy figure could be seen and some murmuring. Jaya with her torch, calls on Jitu if he is there. There was a quick and appears Jitu in front of Jaya. Jitu tells Jaya that, this is not the right time for them to meet and Jaya tells him that, many things have happened. But Jitu is not surprised, as he has already heard everything. Jaya tells about the installation of toilet, when the guards came again in the evening and Jitu is being summoned, by the grey guards for the query. Jaya tells him that, Ma does not have to go downstairs for the toilet and they also have installed a bathroom with a water supply. After two months, the same room and everything has transformed into technology including refrigerator, TV, sofa and Japanese style dining table along with the two cubicles containing, toilet and bathroom. Om gets up and demands food from Ma, but insists that it is not her turn to cook but Jaya's. Ma is busy watching program on TV and Jaya is doing her nails. Om tells that, Gini will be here any minute, but Ma tells that, Bidyut Bai is using the toilet and Om becomes angry at Ma, for letting her use it and does not care about her stomach cramps. At the moment of arguments, Bidyut Bai comes out from the toilet, Om gets mad at her and tells her to get out of the room. Ma insists that, she cannot help her go out and Jaya sarcastically mocks at Ma. As soon as Bidyut Bai gets up to leave, the warning tone alarms and Om is worried as Gini is about to appear on the contact module. Jaya helps her out and the entire lunch table is set up, as Gini does not like them eating late. As soon as the third alarm warning sound made, Ma rushes to the dining table to eat leaving the TV on and Gini appears. Gini tells him that, the Indians really try to avoid conflict, but she calls it as boo-boos, and is a part of their culture. She tells him, to not to confront such and avoiding conflict as it would happen anyways. Gini shifts to Ma and Jaya, but Gini notices that Jaya is not happy and Jaya insists that she is. Gini becomes furious, about joyful atmosphere is keeping a joyful atmosphere, would have an impact on Om's health. Gini tells that, the best organs are the smiling organs and keeping Om's smile, would make the best organs in him and as well and good for the transplant too. There was a knock on the door and Jaya looks and Gini becomes suspicious of her look. Jaya tries to dismiss it, but Ma speaks about someone on the door and Gini asks about it, yet Jaya tells that Gini treats them like a small kids. Gini is infuriated, when two three people talks at the same time. Jaya sneezes and Gini demands to know, if she has cold and demands Om to answer if she a cold. Jaya blames the pepper and there was a knock and a thump on the door again. The knocking on the door continues and Jaya and Ma is irritated. 
Jaya opens the door and is shocked to know that it is Jitu who comes back home. His condition is worse with tattered clothes and covered in grimes. He makes a dramatic entrance and Om is shocked to see in this state and Jaya is concerned. Jitu tells that he has been sleeping on the pavements and tries to flirt with Jaya but leaves downstage and Om tries to regain control of the situation and demands Jitu to tell everything. Jitu tells that he owes nobody nothing and Ma is quite hard on him and Om tells that his permit to leave them is already given up and there was an air of silence. Om tells that he has some chances to stay with them but he decided to leave and he already has given false information about Jitu to the guards and he cannot stay here as he is health hazard. Jitu tells that he is dirty and there are germs even in the germs of his. He shocks everyone that he is ill and tells that it is an overdose of excessive freedom. It is the freedom of lying on the roads, filth eating from the garbage dumps. Jitu starts to throw up a gnome and Mar is concerned about the filth he carries. The lice might infect them and Jaya is concerned about Jitu, but Om tells that Gini and the guards will not like him living with them, but Jaya tells that he is what he is mentioned in the data collected by the guards. Ma is concerned that they don't have enough food for him and is worried about Gini. Jaya tells them that they will wrap Jitu in a sheet and keep him like that until he becomes healthy and give him a haircut to disinfect the lice and lie to Gini that Jaya's husband that is Jitu came back from business trip. Ma taunts Jaya for his selfless care towards Jitu but Jaya tells that his diseases will go away with proper food and clean water. After some couple of hours, Jitu is wasted and he grows visibly clearer and Jaya attends him by washing and cleaning. Ma is blank and speechless. Om is pacing himself and both Jaya and Om has changed their clothes. Om is trying to hold back his emotions. Om is waiting for the call of Gini again and she will be calling them any minute soon. The argument starts again on whether Gini will like Jitu or not and Om thinks she will throw him away. Jaya dismisses and supports the stay of Jitu. Om was going to give it to the guards, but Jaya shows concerns defending Jitu that they do not care about them and especially not as human beings. Om repeats what Gini tells that the curse of the donor world is sentimentality. The argument heats up again between Jaya, Mar and Om over Gini and both Om and Mar taunts Jaya for caring much to Jitu. Om supports Gini and defends her as she is giving them a comfort to live. but Jaya mocks at it believing that they are just a meat at their table while Ma believes that Jaya is just jealous of Gini Om wanted to slap Jaya but Jaya told him to wear gloves but there is a knock on the door Ma believes it as the neighbors and curses them for disturbing them for water Om tells that they should ask the municipality to increase their water supply Om believes that it is no wonder why foreigners think of them as low and petty due to such distractions and community based society the knocking increases and jaya is unsure if it is the neighbors as it could be the guards as there is a code while ma insists it is the neighbors thumping on the door continues and om believes jaya it could be the guards the knocking is violent now and ma and jaya and om are scared about jitu om persuades jaya to open the door as she should be a dutiful wife but jaya claps back for om as such a hero and her man the knocking continues with thumping as well om keeps requesting jaya to open the door and believes that he will be dead in this moment of horror om realizes his importance of body parts and is scared to even give up his nails for it is more precious than a diamond and considers himself a fool for doing such a job Om is very much scared of the door and tells Ma not to open the door and says that the blood will be upon their hands if they open the door. Jaya taunts Om as Om wants the door to be completely sealed with cement and fire and hates the guards, but Jaya mocks at Om that they were good friends before. Om is still scared and wants to hide somewhere, but Jaya stands up and stands next to the bolt and opens the door. It is for Ma and it seems that she ordered something. Ma ordered something and it has not come yet and it was someone who came to take a signature of Ma. Ma keeps it mysterious from Jaya on what she has ordered. Om is lying in the fetal position on the floor as a small child out of horror. 
It has left some fear on Om and Jaya and Ma argues again over how Jaya is jealous of Gini. Ma believes that Om is just a coward and decides to watch TV and opens up about how she was a widow. Surprisingly Jaya wants to know if her husband did not die and Ma tells that he did not die but believes it to be dead and she remains a widow after that. Jaya opens her concern that their dream of getting rich will come down crashing soon as Gini will replace if she finds out what happened to her little pet meaning Om. Jaya believes that she will take everything back and they will lose everything. At that moment Jitu speaks and Jaya tells him that he can only speak but does not do anything but leave and does not even bother or care about them. Ma taunts Jaya not to her husband Jitu like that and Jitu implies that he is Jaya's lover. Om gets furious with Jitu's remarks as his limbs twitch but does not speak up. Jaya taunts Jitu for not showing more concern towards their family and tormenting their family. But Jitu exposes Jaya that when she is weak, she can't even eat the cockroaches swarming into her mouth and that's where her desires breeds. Ma tells that Jaya has been shameless and calls her a slut for having an affair with Jitu, her brother-in-law. Both Ma and Jitu taunts Jaya. Jitu thinks that they can overall manage everything. But there is a sound on the corridor and Jaya and Jitu were talking and Ma interrupts to tell the noise. The guards came again on the door and the guard one threatened to destroy the door if they do not open the door in a count to 10. The guard one searches for the donor and it is Jitu who is afraid and runs away but the guard tries to catch him but Jaya insists that he is not the donor. The guard one do not believe Jitu and thinks Jitu is the donor and Jaya screams. Jaya struggles to fight for Jitu but the guard one refuses to listen to Jaya and thinks that they are all lying. Ma supports it telling the guards to take Jitu away. Guard one tells them that the moment it is time to take them they lie. Ma holds Jaya and asks the guards to make it fast and leave. Jitu cries for help and there are large collectors now from neighborhood to watch the entire scene. The guard too is ready with the syringe to inject on Jitu and both Jitu and guard too are struggling. Finally, the guard too is able to inject Jitu and he screams while Jaya protests about it, but nobody believes her. Jitu is shielded in a stretcher and the guards ready to depart from the room. Jaya believes that they have killed Jitu and the guard one tells them for the cooperation and Jaya demands to know when Jitu will return and the guard one told her that after the process of recovery leading up to 2 hours of one week it also depends on the nature of organ transplant and the free choice of the donor available to the receiver jaya asks them what part of his organ is going to be removed and the guard one dismisses the information jaya becomes furious at the guard one for not answering but they keep asking questions jaya angrily told them to leave the house but the guard one keeps on making assurances that His beloved one would be returned safely in a short amount of time and thank them for their support and compassion. Jaya hates them, but Ma wants to switch on the TV and does not bother about Jitu at all. Jaya gets mad at Ma for her lack of concern towards Jitu as she is more towards TV. Ma angrily tells Jaya that she is her mother-in-law and the one lying on the floor home is Jaya's brother-in-law and her husband Jitu. is gone to the factory spare parts and Jaya is a prostitute standing between Ma's TV and her. It is a night time and Ma is snoring while Jaya wears a nightgown and Om is apparently sleeping. Jaya wakes Om up and have a conversation about Jitu. Om is ignorant towards the entire situation and tells Jaya that they don't care about us as they have used Jitu instead of him or else they would have given him back. Jaya thinks that They have taken him only for something for small insignificant organ like teeth or toenails as it is already 6 hours they means Om and Jaya believe that it could be something part of a big organ like stomach intestines etc Om tells Jaya that he could be infected as he lives in the street and was protected much by his friends Jaya thinks that it would be better if he dies at their hand as they would not hurt him Om tells that the rich people only takes advantage of the poor people like them and it is what happened to Jitu. Jaya and Om got into a big argument as Jaya responds to Om that he is just jealous and he is speaking out of jealousy. Om is mad at Jaya for betraying him 
as she seduced his brother and he feels contempt. Jaya told Om that he never cared for her and never wanted her. Om defends himself saying that he did not have a choice to make and had to sign up for the program. He lost his job and nobody wants a clerk anymore. The factories were closing and nothing was left for people like them. Jaya responds to him about the village but Om tells her that even the village has become a kind of factory and one has to be an industrialist born to work there. He tells her that he stood in the line and was chosen for the program and he blames everything on fate. He defends himself that it was his fate to stay still and lie on the floor and let G2 go instead of him. The return of G2 also lies on fate as well, said by Om. Om seems unbothered about it and tells her that G2 never cared about anything in his own life. There was a sound of the boots coming up to the door and Jaya rushes and opens the door. The guards came to the door and brought G2. G2's condition is worst he is all covered in white clothes and wine red velvet brocade robe and velvet bedroom slippers. Around his eyes were covered with bandages as well as wrap over his head. The guard one tells about the completion of transplant and its success. They will be accountable for the benefit and consideration due to their terms of their contract. Ma is watching TV with headphones on and G2 is sitting between his knees and both Om and Jaya are sitting either side of him. Jaya calls on G2 to speak to her but G2 dismisses her. Jaya is concerned and Om taunts G2 calling him selfish for only thinking of himself. G2 speaks and is scared that he don't want to live like this and taunts Om back showing his covered bandages around his head and eyes. We get to see that G2's eyes are taken off for transplants. As the guards have taken the wrong person instead of Om, Om tells that he received a lot of injections to match Ginny's body and he wonders if it is a success or not as Ginny can be infected with G2's diseases and cold. G2 is disappointed and Jaya tries to console G2. G2 gets mad at Om and Jaya and the air of silence drops. Jaya, G2 and Om continue to argue and G2 is mad at Om. as he did not stood up when the guards came to take ji to instead of home calling him a coward om tries to reprimand by talking to gini if she comes online but jaya is suspicious about gini but om taunts them that she will believe him and it would not have been a problem if jaya and ji to were not filthy and fornicators om questions jaya fidelity the warning sound starts and in the third sound gini appears on the screen of the contact module to talk to them Om and Gini starts a conversation. Gini asks if Om can see her clearly and he says he can see. Gini tells him that she can now see clearly because of his eyes, but Om states that it is a huge mistake, but Jaya intercepts and Gini did not understand the entire situation and shuts down Om. G2 suddenly walks and starts having a conversation with Gini. G2 is in love with Gini, but Gini talks about the next phase. G2 is confused about the next phase and Om shouts that G2 is the wrong person and Jaya struggles to hold Om back. Gini tells about the next transplant and G2 is aware that she needs more organs from him. Gini still believes G2 is Om and Gini asks if he is willing to give and G2 is willing and orders the guards to take G2 away to the clinic for the next transplant. G2 tells Jaya about Gini and how she is beautiful and how she saw her naked body at the clinic. There is a knock on the door. The guards arrive and Om is ready to go with the guards, but the guard 3 grabs Om pinning him to the wall. G2 surrenders himself and the guards take him away and Jaya watches sadly while G2 is taken away. The guard lock the bolt from outside door and Om shouts at them. Jaya sits and Om moans. while ma sits and watches the tv program without a disturb jaya calls ma and tells her about g2 but ma is unbothered and does not care about g2 jaya tells her to get involved and snatches the remote and smashes the tv on the floor ma and jaya fights regarding the remote while nobody knows that om is sitting next to the door listening to something else as jaya taunts ma The boots at the corridor is growing bigger and the door opens with the agent one entering the house. The agent one looks for Madam Indumati who has ordered video couch enterprises. The agents installed the Superdelux video couch model XL5000 in the room 
with around 750 video channels in the TV. Jaya tells to stop such nonsense, but Ma dismisses her saying it is what she has ordered. The Agent 1 explains everything about its features and asks Ma to sign the delivery unit. Ma is suspicious of the agents and tells them if they would not run away with the TV after she sign it. The installation is done and activated and the couch speaks addressing what the tech usually addresses to the customers regarding their facilities. After five days later, it is night and Jaya is worn out and unslept. All of a sudden the noise of warning sounds emerges. The contact module does not have a face on it, but it hovers Jaya. There was a voice calling out to Jaya. Jaya tries to dismiss the voice in the contact module, but the voice tells Jaya not to be scared and Jaya tells to leave her all alone. Jaya asks who is it and the voice knows her name and Jaya is shocked to know that. Jaya wonders if the voice is the friend of Guinea and the voice agrees with her. Jaya and the voice converse about Guinea and Jaya wonders that Guinea is fine as she has taken everything including G2 and Om from her. Virgil moves the contact module to show his face to Jaya to hold it and push the click button from the panel under it to switch on the contact module screen. The contact module screen is on and the face that Jaya sees is G2. Jaya is shocked to see G2 and wonders if he is G2. Jaya is surprised and she does not believe Virgil for it cannot be G2. Virgil tells her whether she is happy or not and does not like the way he appears. Jaya screams and demands to know what happened to G2. Virgil tells everything to Jaya that G2 was willing to sell his entire body parts to him. He tells her that the West has two definitions of death which is the self-death and body death. It depends on her whether G2 is dead or alive for her, as G2 is alive in different body that is in Virgil. Virgil also tells her that Guinea was not real and Guinea was actually Virgil all the time. Virgil shows how his sound looks like when he is a few decibels higher away. Jaya and Virgil argues about G2. According to Jaya, G2 was happy and he was himself even when he was sleeping in the streets but Virgil thinks that he was willing to give his body and his life was not any better when he was living in the streets. Virgil exposes about the truth of contact module to Jaya that every conversation was recorded even when the module was off and Virgil knows everything about G2 and what exactly had happened before in the room. Virgil discloses everything to Jaya that he knew that G2 is not Om and G2 was more available than Om, so he took him in even he was infected with the disease. So Virgil proves Jaya that he is healthy and good. Virgil also disclose about what he has saw, what Jaya was doing, toilet being shared, sneeze and cough and food shared and others. Virgil tells that Guinea was a computer animated wet dream. Virgil tells that Guinea was just a fish and a dish to hook someone for the bait. Jaya tells Virgil about his cannibalistic attitude. Virgil tells Jaya, as they both converse that Virgil was actually a man before and he was old and sick, and now he is okay that he got a young healthy body to live on. He wants Jaya now and not a man for a man, was just a part of the job and not the job itself for, he wants a child-bearing woman. Virgil told her that, on skin and blood matched him, so they chose him as a donor. But Jaya questions to Virgil that, he has taken a wrong man, but Virgil replies that, G2 is Om's brother and he was a better match for him, than Om. Virgil tells her that they look for young man's body, to live on a young woman for the reproduction purposes. Jaya asks Virgil, why they cannot reproduce on their own, so Virgil tells her that, there was a competition between younger and older generations. Virgil tells her that, this is his fourth body transplant in 50 years. Virgil tells that, his wife left him with a child and he never got to see his child and he wants to make, Jaya pregnant with his child. Jaya dismisses Virgil, but Virgil is consistent saying that she wants to be a mother and a child and, she has always yearned for it, but Jaya dismisses it saying that, Asiya has already told her that, the stars have denied her right to be motherhood. Virgil constantly tries to seduce Jaya, to submit herself to him, so that he can reproduce, but Jaya asks, if it is going to be G2's or his. Virgil tells that, it is G2's body, 
but he in uncertain if the child is going to look like jitu or not but the child can have her voice as well there is a knock on the door again jaya then tells virgil that she has come up with a game virgil is protesting against jaya and tries to seduce her but jaya dismisses it virgil tells her that the guards will break the door and she will left with no choice but to surrender but jaya tells him that if they force the door to open then the glass will pierce through her throat virgil mocks jaya that the food she eats have anti suicidal drugs and she can never kill herself jaya warns him to test the strength of the drugs virgil tries hard to convince her that he loves her and admired her strength but jaya tells him to risk his skin for her jaya stands out herself for her now and she decides to set a new rules for everything saying that she will kill herself if the guard tries to discomfort her and she will kill herself no matter what happens she is collecting all the pills and medicines to stay awake and tells virgil to leave her truly alone and do not make any sound virgil protests but jaya blackmails him saying that she will die knowing that he lost to a poor and weakless woman and she will derive pleasure out of it while she dies she tells virgil to truly leave her alone for she wants to enjoy all alone eat three instead of one and watch tv and take long showers she tells virgil to take some rest for he has a long journey to take and it is going to be a hard one implying he needs to risk his skin to come here to jaya the play ends with jaya settles comfortably and watches tv filling the room with rich and joyful music
That's all for today. If you find this video informative, please do subscribe our channel and don't forget to click the bell icon to get the notification of our coming videos. Thank you for watching.